Пожалуйста. Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Auch wenn ich gerade geblendet werde, sehe ich, dass der Saal voll ist und das spricht dafür, dass wir jetzt auch wieder ein Thema haben, mit dem wir den Zeitgeist getroffen haben. Es geht um den Ryanair-Effekt, um die touristische Destination und ihre Entwicklung mit einem besonderen Fokus auf die Rolle von Low-Cost-Carrier. Wir werden dazu, und äh, wir sind da ein bisschen stolz auch, dass Sie wieder gekommen sind, Herr Jacobs, äh, von Kenny Jacobs, dem Chief Marketing Officer von Ryanair, aus erster Hand Informationen bekommen, wie er das aus Sicht des Unternehmens sieht und welche Pläne Ryanair in der näheren Zukunft hat, was die Expansion des europäischen Flugnetzes angeht. Mr. Jacobs, herzlich willkommen, wir freuen uns, dass Sie da sind. Thank you for that uh, introduction. Um, here we go. It's great to be. Uh, it's great to be in Ryanair's fastest growing base in all of 2016, Berlin. Um, we're very proud of that. Last year, our fastest growing base in all of Europe was another German city, Cologne. Um, so it's two in a row for Germany, which we're very excited about. Um, I'm going to try to talk for about 15 minutes uh, or 20 minutes, and then I would love if there was loads of questions. Um, I think there's going to be some microphones, so please have loads of questions and you can ask me anything you want. I, I promise I'll nearly answer everything. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit about the Ryanair story because every time, even though we're Europe's biggest airline, there's always a few things that people go, wow, I never knew that. Um, and we're changing a lot. So there's always new things about Ryanair that it's good to keep you aware of. Um, we used to be cheap and nasty, but I'm very proud of that red X. Uh, it's now, I think, about being cheap and simplicity. And simplicity is one of the key things that any consumer wants, whether it's where you do your supermarket shopping, the airline you travel with, whatever, it's all about simplicity. And being cheap and staying the cheapest in the market, but making travel much more simple for our customers is one of the key things we have been working on and will continue to work on. And also, Alice is Muglitz yet mit mit Ryanair. We are an airline that over the past two years has changed more than any airline in the entire world. Um, two and a half years ago, when we started changing, people said, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Michael O'Leary really changed, really listen to customers and really be nice. But two years into our Always Getting Better change program, and we're about to launch the third year of Always Getting Better, you can really see the difference in the experience as a Ryanair customer. You can really see the difference in our traffic, moving from less than 80 million customers a year to this year we'll do 106 million customers, to from our load factor being just over 80% to this year, our load factor being 92%. So that's 20 extra people on every single Ryanair flight on a two-year period. Uh, but specifically today, I want to talk about the Ryanair effect on regional tourism. And I'm going to give you two examples. One is the Milan area, and the second one is the Brussels area. So um, we now have 81 bases um, across Europe. We are flying to 200 destinations, 31 different markets. Every day we have 350,000 people in the skies over Europe, connecting on 1,600 different routes. Uh, this year we carry 106 million customers, as I said, and we have 330 of the same 737-800. And in the next eight years, we're, we're receiving deliveries of another 350 uh, Boeing aircraft. They are more of the 737-800 and also the new 737 MAX aircraft. This map of Europe, which is our version of the map of Europe, we operate in much more markets than our competitors. So we have fewer eggs in individual baskets. We are the number one airline in the Republic of Ireland, in Belgium, in Spain, in Italy. We're the number two airline in Portugal, but we will overtake TAP this year. We're the number two airline in the UK, and we will probably overtake EasyJet there this year. Uh, we're small in Germany, but I'm about to tell you how we are getting bigger. And we want to be the number one or two in all markets across Europe. Um, in terms of what makes us different, and we are one of those businesses and one of those brands that does one thing better than anybody else, and that won't change 
despite the fact that everything else is changing at Ryanair, and that is we just have the lowest fares. So if you take out our total revenue, divided by the total number of 106 million customers, you will see that this year the average fare is 47 euros. You can compare that to Air Berlin at 120, Lufthansa at 230, any airline. We've become the biggest airline in Europe because we just give customers the lowest fares. And everyone says customers want everything. They want lounges, they want luxurious chairs, they want technology on board. But the number one thing they want is the lowest fares. And that trend will continue uh, into the future. That's driven by having the lowest costs. So our average costs per customer is 29 euros. That's this number here. You can see that the next best is Waze at 39 euros. You can then see EasyJet at, 50, at 51 euros. I won't even mention airlines like British Airways or Lufthansa because they don't even get near uh, those types of numbers. So it's all about keeping your costs down. If you keep your costs down, you have the lowest fares. And lowest fares wins every single time. Um, We've been changing. So behind me, you can see always getting better in the, some of the initiatives we've launched in year one, some of the initiatives we've launched in year two. And in about three weeks' time, we will announce the initiatives for year three of always getting better. Always getting better is the change program that has improved the customer experience at Ryanair for the past number of years. It has worked extremely well for us. This coming year, I won't tell you what the initiatives are just yet, but I will highlight three themes. The first one of these will be simplicity. We've really embraced digital and in particular mobile devices. We've seen an incredible shift in customers who browse our flights, book our flights, and actually board an aircraft using a smartphone. And in some markets now, we see we've gone over 50% of the visits to Ryanair.com are from a mobile device. So it is a very, very mobile generation of customers out there of Europe. So a lot of the changes that we're going to introduce in Always Getting Better Year 3 are about making you know, the travel experience, being with us, and that mobile device, making it much more simple for our customers. The second theme uh, I would call out is choice. We're going to be introducing some new products, be they flight products or non-flight products. And the third theme I would call out is business. About 25% of the 106 million people who fly with us this year are flying on business. We've launched Ryanair Business Plus. That's been a great success, but you will see us launch some further initiatives this year, which are about taking more of the market share for the very large, and in particular, the very large German corporate travel segment. Um, this is our map of Germany. Uh, we've launched two new bases for this coming winter, uh, which we've announced recently. They are Nuremberg and they are Hamburg. We're now flying from 12 airports, eight of which are Ryanair bases. This year, we will grow 60% from 8 million customers to 16 million customers. Last year, we grew 28%. In Germany. In both those years, the German market is growing at about 4%. So that will put Ryanair uh, in this coming year with about 8 to 10% of the German market. If you contrast that with Ryanair elsewhere in Europe, we have about 16% of the total European market, so it's quite a fragmented market. We're the number one player with 16%. And um, if you take some markets like Italy, where we have close to 30%. So us having 8 to 10% market share, it's still low for Ryanair in a typical market, and that's why we want to keep growing here. We've stated an intention that we would like to have 20% of the market here in Germany. If you go back to this time last year, I would have stood on this stage and we had 5%. So to go from 5% to 10% in an 18-month period, that's quite aggressive. That's the growth that we've made in that time frame. So we will continue to, to grow here uh, in the coming months and the coming years. That's about adding more frequency on the routes we fly. That's about adding new routes in the airports that we currently operate. And it's about adding new airports and bases in Europe's largest market and the market that loves to travel the most. Um, this is my picture summary of the German market at the moment. Um, it's, 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 we've got our timing right. Um, you know, you have a strong local competitor who has a lot of distractions, including 13 strikes in the past four years. Uh, you have a guy in the middle who I can't mention because they don't like us mentioning them, uh, but uh, things are quite tough. And uh, my proposal is that Eurowings should change their name to ITB Wings this week and uh, change it to something else next week. But 
come on guys, I have to be able to take the piss out of the competition. Um, um, but it suits us. Look, it's, it's, a market that, it's a market that needs disruption. 15% of the flights in and out of Germany are on a low-cost airline. That same number across Europe is 35%. So Germany is behind when it comes to the penetration and the use of low-cost airlines. The country that leads Europe is the UK, with 65% of the flights in and out of the UK being on a low-cost airline. So Germany needs disruption. German consumers, they need more choice. German airports should offer more choice and offer more low-cost choice to German consumers. And in the end, you as consumers, whether you're traveling to Malaga for sunshine or traveling to London on business, you'll pay lower fares. So why wouldn't you want this disruption? So it's time that the German market was disrupted for the benefit of the German consumer. And that's what has been happening the past number of years. Over the next number of years, you're going to see that accelerate and low-cost carriers will take more market share in Germany. And in five years' time, we'll all say, that's been a good thing for the con German consumer because they have more choice and they're paying lower fares to travel. Um, this is Berlin this coming winter for us. So as I said, we, we had our first flight here in, in 2003 and we only made Berlin a base last October. So less than six months ago, Berlin was, uh, was uh, announced as a base. This coming winter, so from October, we'll have nine aircraft based here in Berlin. We'll have 40 routes that we're operating in the winter. Uh, we will carry 4.7 million customers, and that's supporting 3,500 jobs in the Berlin area. And customers who choose us in Berlin, compared to the, what they would pay with Air Berlin or Lufthansa, will save almost half a billion euros. So this is customer saving money. This is more choice, and this is good for the Berlin economy. This is good for the Brandenburg economy because we're connecting Berlin with places that it hasn't been connected with before. So this is the Ryanair effect here in Germany's capital. This is incredible growth for us. If you go back three years ago, Berlin was an airport where we would have had less than half a million customers. So in that three-year time frame, we've grown the size of our business in Berlin by a factor of 10. Um, that's what those numbers look like. Um, and now I'm going to talk about Milan specifically. Milan is a really interesting one. If you, I've just got a couple of, couple of facts on Milan's growth over the past number of years. If you go back to 2002, uh, Milan, which had two airports uh, at the time, Malpensa and Lanate, uh, and those two airports would have had 25.2 million, million annual traffic. Then in 2002, we started to fly to Bergamo. And if you, if, if you are old enough to remember at the time, a lot of people would have said, Bergamo, where is that? And now if you fast forward to the 2015 numbers, you can see that total Milan traffic now across the three airports has grown to 38.6 million. So because we've opened up in Bergamo, we've brought more choice for the people of the Milan region, be they business travelers or be they leisure travelers, but in particular business travelers. And we're bringing a lot more tourists to the region. So that is Ryanair bringing new choice, bringing low fares, and disrupting one particular region. That at the time, a lot of people said, oh, this isn't going to be good. But it has been very good for the Milan region because they've grown from 25 to just under 40 million customers in that time frame. You can see that Alitalia, at the same time, were retreating from Milan. They were cutting capacity. They were reducing the number of aircraft that they had there. So simply, while they were doing that, because they had their own problems, we were growing our business in Bergamo, but the entire Milan region has benefited in terms of more tourists coming to that part uh, of Italy, spending more money, so restaurants, hotels, everybody does much better when they stimulate growth. Um, Charleroi then, interestingly enough, if I talk about Brussels, Charleroi, we opened a base there in 2001. A lot of people said, where is Brussels, Charleroi? Um, and if you fast forward, you can now see that in this year, we will have 11 based aircraft in Brussels, Charleroi. We will carry just five and a half million customers uh, serving 61 routes, and it's been a great success. Two years ago, we then said we're also going to fly to the downtown airport, Brussels Aventum. And if you look at the chart here and the 2016-17 numbers, you can see that the Ryanair dual airport strategy that we are actually Charleroi now is bigger than Charleroi was before we had Zaventem. 
And if you add the two airports, the two airports are working very well for bringing more people to Brussels, coming out of both airports and bringing people from Belgium around Europe. So it's a great success. And we've had a similar success in London where we fly in and out of three airports, in Glasgow where we fly in and out of two airports, uh, and now Milan where we fly Milan Malpensa as well as Milan Bergamum. So the Ryanair effect on the regions, which people said, okay, this is, is it really good for the regions? The answer is, it really is. It just makes it cheaper for consumers, it offers more choice, and ultimately it connects regions with more parts around Europe. If you're an airport, like if you're, if you're Berlin, what you want is Berlin to be connected to more parts of Europe because this is a great tourist destination. You want Berlin to be connected to parts of Europe that up to now haven't been connected with Berlin, so you get new inbound tourists, as well as the destinations like London, like Manchester, like Dublin, where you will have continual repeat traffic. That's the way it works, and that's our encouragement to any great tourist destination like Berlin uh, uh, across Europe. Um, this is how our fleet will grow in the coming years. So we will, we've increased our plan to 2024, and we now want to get to 180 million customers by 2024. Uh, we will do that for two reasons. One, we will have the aircraft. You can see behind me how our fleet will grow to just under 550 aircraft. So we have 330 today, as I mentioned. We've got 350 new aircraft. We will sell some of the older aircraft. We have the youngest fleet of any airline in Europe. But in 2024, we'll have a fleet of around 550 when you net off the aircraft that we will sell, and we'll carry 180 million customers. We will do that because we have a philosophy in Ryanair, it's just about the load factor, it's less about the fares. So we will fill the aircraft, we will kind of pick a target number and say, that's how full we want our aircraft to be. To do that, if the fares need to be five euros, the fares will be five euros. No other airline works that way. You will see on Ryanair from Berlin to Cologne and across Europe at any one time, if you're flexible where you want to go, you will get 9.99 fares. We have a lot of 9.99 fares now available and you will see that throughout. So that load factor active yield passive model, which means for us, it's just about being the volume player. We are like Aldi or Lidl in the skies. It's just about moving that volume of customers and the fares will be absolutely the cheapest fares uh, in Europe. So that's how the number of customers we carry will grow between now and 2024. Um, these are our uh, new interiors, which uh, are fantastic. Uh, Michael absolutely loves these. Um, and this is the new Boeing Sky interior. I would call out a few features here. Um, you don't get a Michael O'Leary on every single flight, but you do get bigger windows. You do get a more spacious environment. You do get these new slimline seats, which give you more space than the new Lufthansa seats, I'm very proud to say. And these are, are not the new Lufthansa cabin crew uniforms. These are the new Ryanair uh, cabin crew uniforms. I make the reference to Lufthansa because a lot of people in Germany say they look like the Lufthansa uniforms. They do look a little bit like the Lufthansa uniforms. Um, so in summary, I think lower fares and the combination of lower fares plus always getting better and the fact that we're now flying more and more to primary airports. For me, this is the fantastic formula for success that we've had over the past two years. Bookings, load factors are very, very strong. And as I said, this year we'll do 106 million customers. Go back to two and a half years ago when we were carrying just under 80 million customers. Lower oil is a big theme in the airline business at the, at the moment. Every airline looks good because oil is so cheap. You really won't know what is a good airline and what is a bad airline until the price of oil goes significantly up, and then some people will look shit again. Uh, but lower, lower oil means fares are lower. We think over the coming year, fares in Europe could come down by as much as 8 to 10%. So that's great for consumers because it means you're going to be paying even lower fares to travel. Uh, for us, this coming winter and this coming year, it's about adding new bases. It's about massive growth in places like Berlin, places like Romania, even places like London. And keep, we'll keep growing significantly. Germany is a key focus for us. Central Europe is a key focus for us. But even Europe's most mature low-cost market in the UK, we're adding five, extra, five million extra passengers this coming year. It's been a record year of growth for us here in Germany with 60% growth we will do this year with 124% growth here specifically in Berlin. And I think 31 years into the Ryanair story, you can start to see whether it's a Bergamo, whether it's a, whether it's a Brussels, whether it's a Glasgow, whether it's a Dublin, whether it's now 
a Berlin, you can see that the Ryanair effect, it brings more choice, it brings lower fares, and it brings more tourists to great cities like this who will spend in every part of the economy, and that's much better for everyone. And I think you can see, we kind of said we were going to change, and we really have changed. Those changes are working, so anything is possible uh, at Ryanair. We now love change, we love innovation, and you can expect more of that uh, in the coming years. So thank you very much for that. It's 12.50, and I think I've got 10 minutes for uh, hopefully lots of questions. Thank you. They're going to give you a microphone there. My name is Georg Blümacher. I'm a student at the University of Applied Sciences at Worms. And I'm asking now, um, compared to your load factor, which is increasing in the last years, um, do you see that the passengers have a certain uncertainty concerning the punctuality at Eurowings, or how you call it, ITB wings, in the last year, and the change of brands from German wings to Eurowings, so that you can see the uncertainty is there and your passenger numbers are increasing? Uh, well, I think changing the name of anything shouldn't affect punctuality and reliability. That's caused by operational factors. Uh, it becomes more important for customers. One of the things you want, other than having the cheapest fare, is that the plane is going to take off on time and land on time. Uh, and when we research that, that matters more, most of all in Europe, to German consumers because they are puntlik and they want their airlines to be puntlik. So we, we do see it being a big factor. Uh, reliability and the fact that we are, uh, you know, our punctuality is over 90%. Customers love this, so it is a big factor with customers choosing us. It's absolutely helped us grow here in Germany because people say Ryanair, they fly from where I want, they've got the lowest fares, and they're very reliable. So it does help us. All right, and a second question. Um, do you need, if you want to expand on the German market, do you need Air Berlin, for example, to take out capacity to receive more slots on the German market? Not necessarily. Uh, it's a growing market here in Germany. Air Berlin has been reducing capacity uh, over, the, so over the past couple of years, so they will do what they're going to do. We don't need that to happen. Uh, we, can, we can grow here by just bringing more choice, doing what we do very well, and we will see a natural migration of customers switching from Air Berlin and other, other airlines here to Ryanair for the lower fares. So Air Berlin will do what they're going to do in terms of capacity. If they cut capacity, does it help us? Yes, it probably does, but our model doesn't need them to do that. All right, okay. thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Is it on? Okay. Uh, Mark Pletrich, also a student at the International University of Applied Sciences in Bad Honnef, West Germany. Um, I have a question concerning your growth at like the major airports where you're going for dual airports and also um, yeah, like focusing on major airports like Hamburg, like Cologne as well. Um, when you're now going to like increase your growth at the larger airports and cutting some of the capacities or uh, at the small airports that say at Han where you take an aircraft away, um, does this mean that in the future you might have a name change for your airport saying if you fly Saventem and Charleroi you will call Saventem the Brussels airport and Charleroi just Charleroi? Or like for uh, take Barcelona where you started at Girona, Barcelona and Reus, Barcelona and now flying at Prat airport. Would that mean that in the future Girona and Reus could just be named Girona Reus and leaving the Barcelona away? Uh, no. Um, I think we wouldn't see any change in what we call the airports. We kind of generally call them what people call them. So that's the, when you want to sell a flight from a website, you'll generally call the airport what people refer to the airport as. So we just pretty much look at what people are calling that airport on Google and different things. So no, the airport naming approach won't change. I think there is a bit of a, the thought that, okay, as Ryanair now goes to more, you know, flies to places like Hamburg, flies to places like Lisbon and Athens, does that mean that Ryanair flies less at, at uh, what some people call secondary airports. That's also not the case. If you take our growth from 80 to 106 million customers, we're, we're growing at all airports. Um, you will always have some bit of natural movement of where you decide to put your, where you decide to put your aircraft, but we are growing at all types of airports. We've said over the coming five years that approximately half of our growth will be at primary airports because we probably under-indexed on that side. But we want to grow. We want to grow everywhere, and we want to grow at every type of airport. You will, as you get bigger in certain markets, you will have some natural movement of where you decide to put your uh, 
put your capacity, but it's not as simple as you go from, you grow at secondary airports, then you want to keep growing bigger and you move to what people call primary airports. And what's a primary and secondary airport, it's also language that we don't really, we don't really so support, you know? Probably some airports say Cologne is not a, a primary airport. Cologne is a, Cologne is a fantastic airport. People say Stansted's not a, a primary airport, but London Stansted, you know, we'll do over 20 million customers there ourselves this year. How can you not call that a, a, a primary airport in Europe? Okay, thank Thanks. you for that. And uh, second very yep. short question. You said one, about one year ago that you will um, grow at every German airport and will you want to fly to every German airport with the exception of Frankfurt? Does this also might be a return to airports where you used to fly to and now close it like Lübeck? Um, it depends. I mean, it's, so, I mean, the statement I would have made last year is it's, it's still the case where, you know, we are constantly talking to all, all airports. Um, so f when it comes to Frankfurt and Munich, do we need to fly from Frankfurt to Munich to, to grow in the German market? No, we don't. Uh, Frankfurt and Munich play a particular role in the German market. Would we talk to both airports? Yes, we would. We're not going to be flying there for many time soon. But uh, as with so many things at Ryanair now, anything is possible in terms of where we'll fly in the future. What's constant is that we want to grow in Germany. So we will find the best way to grow in Germany. It comes down to, do we have the aircraft? Where do we see the highest demand for, our, for what we do? And where do we get the best deals at, at airports? Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I think there's... Okay, hello. Uh, this is my question. Sorry, it's, oh, there you are. Hi. I think it's like two parts of the questions. Uh, one hour before, I was in the next room discussing about climate change and uh, involvement of aviation and climate change. And now listening your impressive numbers of growth and uh, low cost, I would like to know how comes this together with social impacts and with environmental impacts, with carbon dioxide, uh, with our future at the end, because I think the auditorium is very young and they will have children and they need also a stable climate. How comes this together and what is your policy in that? Um, well, I would say two things. When it comes to the first part of what you said, in terms of social impact, look, there's no better in terms of, you know, while if you, take, if you take the UK at the moment and this, this leaving Europe referendum that they're going to have in June, and there's all this debate now of does Europe need to change and has Europe really worked as a project, I think that, you know, the free movement of people and the opening up of the European aviation market so that fares could come down and everyday people, including students, can travel. Um, I'm 42. When I was, when I was 22, studying in Ireland, going to London for, for job interviews, the fare to go from where I studied in Cork to London was, uh, was about 500 euros. Um, and now you can do that for 19 euros. So there is probably no better example on how Europe and the European project and the EU is good than the opening up uh, of Europe's aviation industry and the free movement of people. And there's no better social impact than people from Germany being able to travel anywhere in Europe for the types of fares that they're now traveling for. So that's my point of view on the first element on the social point. On the environmental point, um, and what's our policy? Our policy is to have the, the youngest fleet. So we have the youngest fleet in Europe. If I take the new 737 MAX aircraft that we've got joining the fleet, these aircraft, they burn a lot less fuel um, so that's, that's, that's going to be better for the environment and these aircraft make a lot less noise. So that's our policy in terms of making sure that we have the youngest fleet because younger aircraft are better for the environment than, than older fleets uh, of aircraft. Hi. Yeah, hi Thorsten. Uh, one question about uh, splitting Europe. Do you fear, uh, fear for your business a split of the European Union? Um, I wouldn't say we fear for our business. We hope that the UK decides to stay in Europe. We hope that Europe changes because Europe does need to change. I don't think it's going to be a case of just keep doing, you know, Europe keep doing what Europe has been doing. Uh, if the UK decides to leave, uh, what's going to happen next? Europe is still going to want to travel to the UK and people from the UK are still going to travel to Europe. So that part isn't going to change. So we don't see any operational impact in our business um, within Europe, but we do hope that Europe stays. Europe is better with the UK in Europe, and the UK is better by staying part of Europe. Um, but Europe 
will need to change. And I think it's going to be an interesting number of months and more countries, including Germany, will want to say, generally, this is a very good project that we've been on, this European Union, but I think hands up if you, hands up if you think there is too much bureaucracy in Europe. Hands up if you think Europe does need to move faster. And it does need to move faster because the competition is the United States and the competition is, is Asia. So I think Europe needs to modernize, it needs to reduce bureaucracy, it needs to be more pro-consumer. Uh, there are some of the things the UK is looking for, and I think then with those changes, it's a better Europe with the UK in it. And we hope, they, we hope the UK consume, you know, voters decide to, to remain uh, in Europe, but it won't have an operational impact uh, on the business. Yeah. Hey, uh, David here with GoPopUp. Uh, on the marketing and promotion side of things, when you guys are deciding to go into a new city or a new airport, do you work at all with tourism boards of that local area, of that region, on kind of co-investing in promotion? Because there's obviously an incentive for you and for them, for people to be going there? Yes, we absolutely do. We will talk to them. We'll talk to them probably in conjunction with the airports to see where do we think the greatest demand is and if we're going to fly to and from two airports. Uh, where is the best demand to fly to. Nuremberg is a good example. Uh, so we've just opened up Nuremberg as one of the new bases here in Germany. And there we did something, we did what we normally did. We talked to the local Franconia and Bavaria tourist groups. We talked to the airport. But we also talked to a lot of local businesses. You have some very big German businesses like Adidas and Audi who have big production facilities and commercial facilities near Nuremberg. We basically asked them, where do you want to travel to? Because we want them to basically use Nuremberg Airport uh, rather than just always travel to, to Munich. So we talk to the tourist groups, we talk to the airports, we're also now starting to talk to businesses as well to say we want more of your people to use our airline, so tell us where you want to go. Okay. And, and then also you mentioned that Germany is behind in terms of embracing, I guess, low-cost low travel, air travel in, behind Europe yeah. in terms of the average. Do you think that that's because of the low volume, for example, of Ryanair flights that are available to them? Or are there perhaps other reasons that Germans are apprehensive about Ryanair as a brand? Um, I don't think it's because Germans are apprehensive about Ryanair as a brand. I think there's an element of, yes, has there been enough low-cost airlines operating in Germany at scale for German consumers to have the choice? So yes, low-cost airlines need to come here for Germans to try the product. Um, so, uh, and it's, look, at th it's not, I'm not making a criticism of the German market, I'm making an observation of the German market, but the numbers are what the numbers are. Low-cost airlines have over 35% of the European market, they've got about 15% of the market here in Germany. Germany is the country that gave us Lidl and Aldi, so you get discount brands, and Germans are smart with their money. So low-cost airlines should have a bigger share of the German market. That's up to us, the low-cost airlines, to come here and bring growth, as we are now doing, but it's also, I think, up to the German consumer. This is a young audience who I'm sure has, basically, if you want to go from Berlin to Barcelona, hands up if you get excited about the airport. No one does. Do you get excited about the airline? No, you get excited about Barcelona. So it's about being smart with your money. So we think that formula is going to work more and more in Germany. It's quite a traditional market in some senses. You know, there's a lot of lounges, there's a lot of loyalty schemes, there's a lot of very shiki Mickey airports, but I think more and more, uh, more and more, it just comes about being smart with your money and spend your money at the destination, Barcelona in this example, rather than on getting to that destination. That's what's happened in the UK, that's what's happening across Europe, more and more that will happen in Germany. And in the end, you just get more choice, you pay lower fares, and it's perfect competition. And who's against perfect competition? Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Wir haben jetzt eine Viertelstunde Pause und dann werden wir uns mit der Start-up-Battle beschäftigen. Danke.